But let me continue again. As I'm saying, look around in your family. Look around and people that are around you. You'll know who wants it. Do you understand? You'll know and you'll know who don't. But the thing is, it doesn't matter if they don't. But if the family come together and one person make changes, they're going to follow suit. That's one thing about bearing fruit. You understand? It's got to start somewhere. I mean, we got to put trust in each other. One family member person may not have the gifts of funds, but he have the gift of gab. You understand? He has the word. He has the knowledge. The person with the gift of funds might have to help the person with the gift. Do you understand? It's all going to work out. That's why we need to come together as family members and as friends of Christ. You understand? We got to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not about your bloodline. It's about anybody who's willing to step out in obedience and help one another. It's time for the body of the church to be made whole. It's time. It's time, people. You know, I don't take nothing again. I don't take nothing from how I was raised. Nothing from it. I learned from it. I grew from it. Good things, bad things. It all it is what it is. I can't change it. I can't change the past. God doesn't want me to worry about the past, but he still want me to see the errors. That's why I read the Revelation. I mean, the Old Testament a lot. I got to see the errors. That means sometimes I got to look back in my family lifeline. Because I don't know what's going on in your family. You got to look back in your family lifeline and see what changes need to be made. You understand? See why the family is not together anymore. See why the church body is not together anymore. It's time to forgive and forget. One thing I know about families. Families are like this. One auntie mad, not a kid's mad. One uncle mad, not a man. That grudge can carry it over to another generation. And if we don't be careful, it's going to carry over to the next generation. And then they say, you know, you're going to have your family sleeping with each other because they ain't going to know each other. Because why? We didn't separate it. You understand? All kind of ungodly is going to start happening if we don't make changes. Now, we got to let our family members know each other. And the thing is, it's not just about family, but it is right now. It starts there. It starts in the house. It starts to suppose those you know. But you know what? It's going to come to a point where you have to be like Abraham. If your family is not willing to listen, you have to step out on your own and do what God called you to do. If that means come from among them, it means exactly that. You understand? No matter what. To me, it's nobody who has an excuse for not knowing the word. Because I'm going to tell you a truth that I've seen. It's somebody in every family in the world that's spreading the word right now. Do you go on Facebook? It's somebody that's spreading the word. It's somebody that's talking about it. But you know what us as family members do? We scroll past it. We scroll past it. Oh, no, I ain't. Whatever. I know how they used to be. We pull, we pull what, what Jesus people felt or uh, pulled on him when he was in his hometown. Ain't that Jesus? Ain't that the carpenter? That's, ain't that the mother, the son of mother, Mary and Joseph? You understand? We pull those numbers because we don't want nobody to surpass us. <laughs> it's not a competition. You understand, people? It is what it is. You know, I would encourage my family members to listen to me. I would, but I can't make them. You understand? I can't make them. I would encourage them to listen to anybody that's spreading the word. I would encourage you. You understand? We spend so much time watching this and that, watching that on TV, watching that on TV, listening to this type of music. It's time to focus on what's important. Because we already know the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it's time to make changes in our lives. I do this because I love you. I love y'all. You understand? And it's changes that need to be made. You understand? It's a lot of things that were going on in the churches when we grew up. And I know, we know, that kind of gave us a little bitter taste in our mouths. That's why we can't really get it right again. Because we saw so many things in churches growing up that we know weren't of God. God let us know. We saw so many things in our family that we know that weren't of God. God let us know as we got older. But now it's time for us to forgive that and move forward. He told us what changes need to be made. It's time to make those changes. It starts with us. You understand? It starts with us. 
Me, I'm the type of person I feel like it's too many churches in the world. Let me reiterate that. Let me just say what I mean. It's so many churches in the world. But how many churches are doing what they want to do? And I'm like the type of person like, man, I just don't want to start another one. Just because I feel I can do it better than the next. And I can't do it better than the next. I believe they're doing it the best ability they know how. You understand? I do. It's so many. It's a church on every street corner. You ride down one street, you might pass by 10 churches. You're like, what? Why should I make another church? You understand? I think like that sometimes. But I understand why people keep making other churches. I also understand that concept. Because they're like, hey, let's do it this way. You understand? I understand why there are so many different denominations. Because people will see flaws. And they'll tell the leaders. And the leaders don't want to fix the flaws. So the people are like, you know what? I'm going to start another church. Because these people ain't willing to listen. Let's start another one. They ain't listening. You understand? Let's start one. We can do it better. Then you get one. You start it better. Then that church fall victim to the same thing. Reform. Church reform. It's a song that's out. My wife loves it called, It Starts Right Here. You know what that means? It starts within you. You are the church. It starts here. You understand? That means if you got to start being more varsity in your church, you got to do that. You understand? You know, it starts with you. The change starts with you. You don't want to reform back to the world. Because guess what? It gets harder every time you go backwards. You want the world to reform to how God wants us to be. But we also know, that's why I've been talking about revelations, that the world is going to get worse. We do know this because it's written. We don't do know this. We know it's going to be harder. You understand? That's cool. That means we know we got to work harder. So that may be the reason why so many churches are opening. You understand? That may be the reason. You understand? I don't know. I just know what the Bible says and I go by it. You understand? If I read it, I got to believe it. I know the world is going to get worse. I know we're inching closer and closer towards that one world government, towards that beast towards the synagogue of Satan showing itself to Christians being persecuted you understand the thing is we're in a battle right now we're in a battle for souls you understand God is trying to get his people and the enemy is trying to get his and the thing is I read the Bible a lot and he says sometimes the enemy is going to fool their leg he's going to get some of the people who know the word and convert them to what him we got to be careful out here you understand? That's why we need to stay true with that word. You know, like right now, people hate to talk about this. People hate. I'm going I'm to talk about it one more time. And I'm going to push it uh, down people's head one more time. Look up Nicolaitan. Research it. Find what you need to find. Look it up. It's something Jesus talked about twice or three times in the Bible. Nicolaitan. Look it up. Please. I advise you to look it up. And see what it means to be a Nicolaitan. And this is something that Jesus hates. It's like somebody serving two masters. You understand? And we live in a world right now where we are so people pleasing. I'm going to bring up this holiday season. I hate to bring it up, but I got to bring it up again, people. You know why Christmas and Christ still are the same? Because nobody wants to break that chain. We know for a fact. Deep down in our hearts, every Christian does, that Christmas has nothing to do with Christ. We know this for a fact. When you, If you go on TV right now and you watch a Christmas movie, 98% of them going to be about Santa Claus and giving and this and that. You know who's this about. Now, you're trying to wonder why I'm bringing up the nigga Layerton again. You need to watch the video that I put up last week. We can't blend pagan with Christianity. We're not supposed to, people. Oh, I'm tired of hearing this excuse that God understands. Well, we got to wonder why change ain't coming. I've been doing videos about the Old Testament, what happened when reform happens. Change comes. A lot of these pagan holidays and these ritualistic things that we do, they ain't of God. If it were, it'll be written. Santa Claus will be clear as day in the Bible, but he's not. Yeah, he is, in a way, as an idol. Do you understand? Nobody wants to hear this. Why? Because we don't want to take it from our kids. 
We want to do better than our parents did. And actually, we are doing worse. We're doing worse. We're not trying to change that. You understand? We're not trying to change none of that. Easter. You watch movies. It's more about the Easter Bunny than anything. You watch TV. What is it about? People. Why are we not making changes? Why these churches are not making changes? Why? Because they are trying to please their wife. They are trying to please their congregation. Or they are trying to please the world. I'm trying to get to a point where I don't care what the world thinks about me. If I got to make changes, I'm going to make them. You understand? And guess what? I want somebody, if I do fall victim and fall back with the slap me back to reality. Pop! Houston, stay on course. I want that. You should want it too. You understand? It starts right now. It starts right now. It starts right now. It starts right now. You can even watch. You can listen to a gospel station. Then they throw a Christmas song in there. A Christmas song that's not about Christ. They let you know it's not about them. Then they'll throw one about them. It's a difference between a song about Jesus and a Christmas song. A Christmas carol. You know, you can play the song about Jesus year round. Why wait till Christmas to do it? Away in the manger. It's not a Christmas song. It's a Jesus song. You understand, people? Y'all gotta understand some things. Changes for to be made. And it starts in the church. What are you gonna do about it? What is God setting your heart to change? What is God setting your heart to tell your family members about? You understand? But we keep passing on these same legacies that ain't got nothing to do with God. It's time for a change to be made. You understand? Church leaders, you know what's right. Make the change. Make the change. Why you're not making a change? We know why. We know why. Because nobody wants to tell nobody the truth. Have a blessed day.